All right, but now we know fasting's awesome, right? You're watching this channel because you know that fasting has some powerful effects, but there's some really cool emerging science surrounding the world of what fasting literally does to your gut bacteria, and then down the line, does to your overall fat burning process within the body. So I'm gonna cut right to the chase and be respectful of your time here. You're tuned in to the internet's leading performance and fat loss channel with new videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. We've got a bunch of videos going out all the time. Make sure you hit that red button so you subscribe, but then also hit that bell icon. That's very important because that's gonna make you turn on notifications so you know whenever I post a live video or just post any video. Now I also want you to check out Thrive Market. Maybe you've seen them before, but Thrive is an online grocery store. So basically Thrive makes it so you can get your groceries online cheaper than you would at the grocery store without ever having to leave your house. So literally your groceries end up on your doorstep and at the end of the day, even with shipping in a lot of cases, you end up saving money compared to what you would at the grocery store. The best part is I've compiled fasting bundles, I've compiled keto bundles, I've put all kinds of foods that I think are good into specific Thrive bundles so that my fans and my followers can check it out. So check them out after we get through all the science. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is something known as bacterial clearance, okay? Bacterial clearance is our body's ability to evacuate bacteria, good or bad. Now, what's interesting is fasting has been shown to help expedite bacterial clearance of bad bacteria. There was a study that was published in the Scandinavian Journal of Immunology that took a look at subjects. Now, full disclaimer, this study looked at mice, but one thing that you need to know is that there's a reason that researchers use mice. It's because they can go through things a little bit faster. So here's what's interesting, and I'll get into the human studies a little bit later, but this study found that when they put mice through alternate day fasting, they were able to clear salmonella out of their system over twice as fast. So basically what was happening was when mice were infected with salmonella and they had them fast, the salmonella would just move through their system and not absorb. Now ultimately what they found was going on was that there was an increase in what's called immunoglobulin A or IgA. So what would happen is IgA heightens the immune response within the mucosal layer of the gut. So with our gut, we have our intestines and then on the outside or kind of the, the inside, but the very outer edges, of the gut, we have a mucosal layer. That mucosal layer is essentially our immune system within our gut. So what happened is we have an elevated process of the immune response in that mucosal layer, making it so the salmonella didn't get a chance to cross through. It just got pushed out on through the body. So it's exactly what we want. So elevated IgA is a very, very good thing. So they found that salmonella instances weren't nearly as bad in the mice that fasted. Now, why is this actually happening? And this translates directly into humans too. It has to do with stress. You see, when we're stressed out, like when we're fasting, what ends up happening is our gut flora is affected by the IgA, okay? So what happens is when we fast, we increase our levels of immunoglobulin A because we're fasting and our gut is stressed out because it doesn't have food. So we have a heightened immune response localized in our gut that we want, and that changes the gut bacteria. So it's actually been found, and it's been found in humans too, that if you're deficient or low in IgA, you're having lower levels of beneficial gut bacteria. So low levels of IgA equal more bad bacteria and less good bacteria. Pretty crazy that we actually want the immune response at this point in time. Now when we take it one step further, we find that IgA, or immunoglobulin A, actually improves colonization within the gut. So that means the good bacteria end up colonizing more. Now this has to do with something known as the commensal colonization factor. So basically it means that when our body's stressed out, it does whatever it can to try to colonize good bacteria. You see, it's like the body gets a signal that, okay, this person's under stress, there's a, a foreign invader, whatever. It does whatever it can to instigate this commensal colonization factor to try to get more of the good bacteria to grow. It's like our body already knows that good bacteria is going to fight an illness or a pathogen or whatever. So it's pretty powerful. So basically it allows good bacteria to grow. So we have a double whammy effect. Bad bacteria gets out of the body a lot faster and good bacteria can colonize. But let's go ahead and take it even one step further because this is really interesting stuff. Bacteria in our guts send signals when they get hungry. Okay, we don't necessarily feel them. So we've got thousands, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of trillions, billions of bacteria in our gut, like tons, right? We don't feel when each individual bacteria gets hungry. Like, okay, we don't necessarily feel it or mentally register it, but the fact is they do get hungry and they send signals when they get hungry. Now, there's something known as the doubling rate. The doubling rate is how often a specific bacteria gets hungry and how often it needs to eat and ultimately how often it doubles or grows, right? Here's the interesting thing. 
Most bad bacteria, almost all of them, have a very high rate of doubling. Okay? They double at a fast rate, which means they get hungry a lot, which means that they're needy, kind of spoiled brats. So what ends up happening when we're fasting is they don't get a chance to eat. Well, if they're hungry all the time, they're going to be the ones that die first. So sure, they're needy, they want to eat all the time, and then the moment that you starve them, they just are like, oh, I can't handle it, I can't handle this, I'm so fragile, and they just break down because they can't get their food. So what ends up happening is the good bacteria, which don't get as hungry as often, they get a chance to grow and proliferate. The bad bacteria die off, the good bacteria grow. So this is exactly what we want, it improves our ratio of good bacteria to bad. Well, how does this actually play into your fat loss? Well, let's take a look at another study. So a study published in the journal Cell Metabolism took a look at every other day fasting. So one day not fasting, one day fasting. They wanted to find out the effect it actually had on the gut microbiota in general, but they also wanted to find this fat link. Now what I mean by that is a link between our fat cells and the gut. They found when people were fasting, they had this what is called beijing of white fat. So white fat doesn't really do anything. It sits on our bodies, just adds insulation, some cushion. But if it becomes brown, it actually develops the ability to increase our body heat, which helps us burn fat. So they found that fasting increased the beijing of white fat, meaning white fat was turning to brown fat. This is good for multiple reasons, but in regards to the overall colonization of good bacteria and overall gut health in general, we have to look at a whole other angle. You see, it's something called the microbiota fat axis. So what we're actually finding now is that beijing of white fat increases a specific gene known as MCT1. Okay, not MCT oil, but MCT1. Okay. This is a specific gene that actually encourages the upregulation of good bacteria within our gut. So we have multiple mechanisms in which this is working now. When we have this Beijing and we have more of this MCT gene, what's happening is we have an increased fermentation of the good bacteria. So that means we have lactate and acetate and these other things coming in and fermenting good bacteria. So we actually have another effect, and it just has to do with simple cellular recycling. It's like our body's getting more efficient, AMPK is upregulating, we've got different gene expression occurring. That's causing our body to get more efficient at utilizing its own fuel sources, not just for our own energy, but for our bacterial energy within our gut. So based on this, some of the things that you can do would be to actually, after you break your fast, like maybe an hour or two after you have your breakfast meal, get those prebiotic fibers in because you're in a great position to grow those good bacteria. So you break your fast with whatever you break your fast with, and then like an hour or two hours later, get a lot of asparagus, get a lot of artichoke, get a lot of celery in, things that have prebiotic fiber to help grow the good bacteria that at that very point in time is thriving. So there you have it, quick summation of what happens with your gut with intermittent fasting. As always, keep it locked in, and I'll see you in the next video.